Well, good afternoon, Women at Hope Medical Group for Women. My name is John. I'm a registered nurse, a father of three beautiful children, and a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to just acknowledge that it is very odd that you're having to hear an individual speak to you through a cone outside. But I'll tell you where I'm coming from. Thank you, sir. If you were to go to your nearest podiatrist's office prior to this pandemic, I can assure you that you would not find a single person pleading with people not to get corns removed from their feet. If we were to go to our nearest dermatology clinic prior to this pandemic, I can assure you, you would not see men and women pleading with those inside the building not to get moles removed from their bodies. Because the reality, ladies, men, hear me, is that we're not dealing with the disease process. We're not dealing with moles. We're not dealing with cysts. We're not dealing with corns. But we are dealing with human beings. And ladies, we love you enough to tell you this, but what you're doing is not what God wills for you. There is a better way. And we do have something that hope will not offer you. We have free resources. I myself am very blessed with a very good paying job. I have more than enough money and I'm willing to help you myself with absolutely anything you need. But it is going to have you come out of this place because what you're doing is ending the life of your baby boy or baby girl that God himself has named. And I realize the counselors here have told you several times that you're ending a pregnancy. Well, that's partially true. The life of that human the life of that beautiful baby boy or baby girl is ended. You see, it's not simply a clump of cells. It is little Bobby, little Wade, little Shaniqua, little Elsie. Little Jeremiah. Little Shadrach being killed here today. The Bible says that there are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are an abomination to Him. Haughty eyes a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood a heart that devises wicked plans feet that make haste to run towards evil a false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord among brothers friends all seven of those things happen here. And the fact of the matter is you may think that there is no God, but
But all of creation testifies. All of the world around you in its grandeur and its beauty testifies to a creator. And the Bible says that men suppress the truth about God in unrighteousness because what is known about Him is plain to them. And so all of us are without excuse. I have two very big fears today for you ladies out here. The two big fears I have for you is that you will leave this place you will leave this place changed but not for the better my fear is that you will fall into such a depression to the point of wanting to take your life because you realize that this was the wrong choice I fear that because the Bible says it is once appointed for man to die and then comes the judgment. There comes a day where all of us here will have to face our God and there's only one of two verdicts that God gives out. You are either found guilty of breaking God's law or God issues a not guilty verdict now I want to be clear I'm not proclaiming to be better than you not by any stretch of the imagination the Bible says that whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point is guilty of all of it because it all stems back to the lawgiver the perfect lawgiver and so all of us as the Bible says are guilty we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory And so the bad news of all of Scripture, all of what I'm about to tell you sums up in this simple phrase. The worst news that I can give you today is that God is good. Now, if you think about that, the reason that's bad news is because we are not good. So ultimately, what does a good God do with a people like us? Since God is good, righteous, holy, he must punish us. And so my fear, the second fear that I have for you, is that you will face God in judgment and end up in a place where guilty sinners deserve to go. A place called hell, where the Bible teaches that it's where the fire is never quenched, and the worm does not die. In other words, it is God's holy, infinite justice against infinitely evil sinners. Now ladies, there is great news for you today. I realize that many of you think that there is no other way, that this is your only option out. 
But when we say we have free resources, we have help that you need, that we will adopt your baby and pay for everything, we mean that with a heart of love. We are sincere and we are ready to go the distance for you and for your child. Now I want to begin to tell you some very good news, the best news that all of you women in here need to hear. As I made it clear, we have all violated God's law and guilty of being sentenced to hell. But the good news is this. Our God that we serve is rich in mercy. You see, 2,000 years ago, God the Father sent His only Son into the world to do something that not a single one of us could do, even on our best day. Two thousand years ago, as the Bible speaks that the Word became flesh, God the Son came down and lived a perfect, righteous life in our place. He kept the law perfectly with every thought, with every word, and with every action. And this Jesus, purposely, willingly gave His life to die to pay a penalty, an infinite penalty. You see, the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There is no wiping clean your slate, as it were. And so this Jesus, who was not a lawbreaker, went to a Roman cross and was treated as a lawbreaker in our place. He bore the sins of the world on Himself. And he was crushed under the wrath and the judgment of his father. Then this Jesus died and he rose again three days later. And in his rising again from the dead, this was to show his victory over sin and over death. 